the year of the pig with an abundance of fortuitous tidings and lavish tradition. Pay tribute to new beginnings with the spray of nature's most prosperous blooms. Spread the wealth with the desirable ornaments and beauties. Propel yourself forwards with the fullest and biggest 360 degree view in Hong Kong. And show your stylish side to guarantee more luck this year. Welcome to Dolce Vita! Before we start today, we'd like to send you our warmest greetings. Gong Fa And I wish you Li Li Niao Yu. Other than sending greetings over Chinese New Year, Chinese people love to cook dishes that signify luck. And the hairy vegetable is a very popular ingredient because the two words in Chinese sound like wealth. And I know that the Chinese word for fish is similar to the word surplus, and people usually leave some of the fish and eat to ensure prosperity in the new year. And you'll definitely be inspired by the creativity of our ancestors after this program. Do you celebrate Chinese New Year's? Yep, even though I grew up in England, my family is quite traditional when it comes to stuff like that. Well, my family too. I love the cooking and the feasting. Jason, have you ever tried a dish called Good News Wrapped in Good Fortune? I haven't actually, so I hope you've prepared it for me. Don't forget the turnip cake, that tradition I've got to have. We definitely have that. We can't start a new year without the traditions and auspicious food. Critical ingredients include the headlining Chinese turnip, ever essential shrimps, juicy moist mushrooms, and abalone as the unique substitute for the usual preserved meat to add a healthier and more distinguished quality to this special occasion. Traditionally, a variety of cakes are baked at Chinese New Year, such as turnip, glutinous rice, and yam, to symbolize a full year of prosperity and rising fortunes. Cakes, or go in Chinese, symbolize rising and expansion, not to mention that they're also a fulfilling and satisfying start to the year, so don't forget to include them in your feast. Begin the cooking process for the turnips by simmering it in a wok. This allows the texture to soften and the best flavors to be poured out. Blend all the ingredients into the paste. Bear in mind, as with many traditions, there are a variety of recipes to these traditional cakes, differing from family to family and being handed down and modified throughout the generations, according to different tastes and different times. Now, evenly spoon the paste into your chosen baking dish and add another abalone on top for good luck. Then steam for about one hour. And what a result? You can choose to pan fry your turnip cake for that crunchy on the outside and moist on the inside deliciousness. and not forgetting the New Year cake or glutinous rice cake. Brings back good memories. Even though the celebrations in London aren't as big as in Hong Kong, I remember mum getting very busy in the run-up to Chinese New Year with all the cooking and cleaning, giving us a true taste of Chinese culture. Is this similar to how your mum makes it? Not quite, but it's still very tasty. Which do you prefer, the turnip paste or the New Year cake? This is the one I like. I like the turnip paste. I like it because of this texture, and you get all the all the goodies inside it. It's really nice. How about you? Well, a bit of a sweet tooth, so I love the New Year cake. Lobsters are known as dragon shrimp. This dish is to wish you long ma ding san, so that you have the energy and health of a dragon every day, an attribute that's invaluable and not easily bought. The symbolism here is the way asparagus resembles bamboos, which are considered lucky. The wish is zhuo guan yu yi, which literally wishes the monarch desires to be satisfied. However, in modern times, we'd like to wish that everyone has a smooth year. It's considered fortunate to begin the year by sharing affluence, and shark's fin is a classic oriental indicator of wealth. Some also consider it valuable for its health benefits, since sharks don't get cancer. Well, these are all the dishes I've been waiting for, and every single one of them has a special name, a happy, auspicious-sounding name for good luck. Great. So which one's the good news wrapped in good fortune? I love a bit of good news. Well, this one here is called Ho Si Bao Fa Choi. Ho Si means good news and oyster in Chinese. Fa Choi stands for hairy vegetable because it looks like hair, but it isn't a very good name, is it? Well, luckily, hairy vegetable sounds like good fortune in Chinese, 
which is why it's auspiciously interpreted as fortune. Complicated? Just a little. But because Chinese has so many homophones, it's easy to get confused. But when it comes to playing with words, it's a fun language. Well, that's what it's all about. Playing with words and coming up with the most auspiciously sounding ones is about sending the right vibe. So it's the power of words and wishes. Mm -hmm. That's right. We love to bring in the new year with great things. After all, put your best foot forward. A very long time ago, the Chinese concocted a potion for immortality. They used volatile ingredients and put them inside hollowed out bamboo tubes. These were basically the very first firecrackers. But similar to firecrackers, fireworks were made of gunpowder, which is then stuffed into rockets and then launched into the sky. I love fireworks, but the sad thing is they only last for that one second. Well, that's why we treasure the moment of full blossom. There's a lot of interesting traditions to celebrate Chinese New Year, and every single one of them has their own history and legend. And plants and flowers are often used to express good wishes during Chinese New Year, which is why the Chinese markets and the florists often enchant people with their traditional and contemporary flowers. But whether it's the money tree, cherry blossom, or sweet olive plum, every plant signifies the blossoming of the New Year. Over the centuries, Chinese New Year has evolved into one of the festivals that celebrates the beginning of everything. That's why people love to shop for new things during this holiday. And that includes beautiful flowers as well. Chinese people believe that if flowers blossom well, they'll bring success and good fortune. That's why families love to go to flower markets and florists on New Year's Eve to buy traditional flowers for their home. Chinese people believe that kumquat trees, narcissus and peonies bring in prosperity. Peach blossoms add fire to romance. And tangerine plants with leaves intact help ensure long-lasting relationships and fruitful marriages. And other than these traditional plants and blooms, we've also found something quite extraordinary. This plant has a very unique appearance. There are layers after layers, which imply that people are advancing in the new coming year. Hongxing is said to be one of the auspicious plants, especially during Chinese New Year. Not only because its red color is considered lucky, but also because part of its name is a homophone to the Chinese word progress. The shape of this plant resembles a human's palm, representing the tight grasp of power. Aside from the shape of the flowers being a good symbol, the bright colored waxy blooms of the flamingo flowers are also a wonderful home decoration during Chinese New Year. This flower, which looks like a lotus, is originally from Yunnan. It also represents fertility, which is why it's so very popular with married couples who want children. Golden Lotus has another name, Lotus of a Thousand Petals, because of the overlapping appearance of their leaves. Unlike most flowers you'd find in the market, this plant has a long blossoming period up to almost 250 days. In other words, it can stay with you even long after the new year. Plus, its flowers have been considered as a symbol of kindness and holiness since the ancient times. It makes a good alternative to Chinese traditional New Year flowers. Orchids have always been auspicious during Chinese New Year because of their variety of breeds and color. Aren't they just fabulous? Some people also love to include orchids in their home decorations during the Chinese New Year. According to the shop owner, different orchid hybrids have been bred in recent years because customers nowadays tend to go for orchids with rare colors, such as pale yellow or light pink with a violet center. Another good thing about these orchids is that they often come with special vases shaped like a gold ingot or a yacht, which makes them even better decorations for the festival. The younger generations also like to customize their flower arrangements to make sure they're the best suited to their own homes. Chinese New Year is the most glorious and colorful Chinese festival in the lunar calendar. It's the perfect time for friends and families to get together to enjoy the attractions and the traditions. That's why we love to use colorful flowers to decorate our homes. More importantly, to bring in joy and luck. Coming up, we honor tradition with a full view of Chinese culture. And we show you how to stride into the new year in full groom. Among the 12 
zodiac animals in the Chinese horoscope, the pig is one of those that signifies good luck and wealth. And since 2007 is the fifth pig year of the 60-year cycle, it is also known as the year of the golden pig. In this special year full of blossom and luck, golden piggy decoration and accessories would be perfect gifts for family and friends. The Chinese are very practical in the philosophy of gods. Chinese people invite different gods for different occasions. During the new year, the god of fortune would be the big guest at the table of sacrifice. We say, a god in need is a god indeed. I wonder if a piggy god of fortune will bring me some amount of wealth too. Penny saved is a penny earned. The year of the golden pig is considered to be the year of good fortune. So it's time to start your own golden piggy bank. We all love to talk about management nowadays. Time management, business management, emotional management. But during Chinese New Year, money management will become the biggest issue because we're all going to receive lots of red envelopes. Children born in this auspicious year are to believe that they could inherit good fortune and happiness as the guardian pig is particularly energetic under the influence of gold. Whether you believe in these myths or not, I'm sure these pedants would keep your baby good company. I know many Chinese parents like to buy some little accessories for their babies because it's believed that these pendants and charms will keep their babies safe. Lucky newborns in the year of the golden pig. In the new year, how do you achieve your goals? How about decorating your home with the most auspicious items and inspiring yourself to sit down to think through the New Year plans? I'm not sure if I believe that the year of the golden pig would cast its fortune upon me, but I'm sure that I want to live this year to its fullest and with confidence. And the year of the golden pig only comes in every 60 years, and I want to strive the best in everything. I know for those Chinese people who's lived in foreign countries, Chinese New Year's means a lot to them. I couldn't agree more. Chinese New Year in London is a very special time of year when Chinese families get back to their roots and culture. And how would you celebrate such an important festival then? Well, things that most people do. Cleaning, feasting, cooking. But the most fun part has definitely got to be receiving red envelopes from the older generation. Totally! I love these envelopes. I think they're the best part. But I do consider a relaxing getaway to taste the essence of Chinese culture. Finally! Yay! I'm totally excited! Wonder what we're waiting for? A movie? A New Year festival? Not even close. We're riding one of Hong Kong's biggest cable cars. Each cabin can hold up to 17 passengers. And with a total of 100 cabins, you can imagine the number of people it can carry back and forth to Lantau Island every day. I was a bit scared before I got on the ride. But thinking about that, here are some of the most beautiful views of Hong Kong. The Hong Kong International Airport, the green terrain of Lantau Island. This is actually quite an enjoyable trip. And see, there's also the Tian Tan Buddha. It looks huge, even though we're so far away from it. Finally, after a 20 minute ride, our first stop. What do you think, Rabia? Well, it reminds me of ancient China. Except we can do loads of shopping here. Come on. The village is quite a large area, which takes up almost about one and a half hectares. Shops range from embroidery, handicraft stores to modernized coffee places. What's better than spending a relaxing afternoon wandering in some of these places? After some shopping, the tea house is definitely a good place to quench our thirst. Museums nowadays like to install computers to provide their visitors with an interactive learning experience. Can you believe a traditional tea house like this is actually integrating to the new technology? This is the world's first interactive multimedia tea house. It's a great place for visitors to learn about ancient history of Chinese tea and its origins. And now I know Chinese tea was first found in the southwestern part of China. Here there's also a tea master demonstrating the traditional Chinese tea ceremony. Tea ceremony is a lot different from the ordinary tea tasting in those dim sum places. Since tea ceremony aims to put our mind to a restful state, 
Very often, a peaceful surrounding with some soft traditional music is the key. And Chinese people believe that philosophy can be reflected in tea tasting. However, most tea ceremonies don't relate themselves to any religion. And each step is only meant to be a sensory exploration and appreciation. The art of drinking and serving tea has played a major cultural role in China. For centuries, the ritual of preparing and serving tea has held a special place in the hearts and minds of intellectuals and poets. It inspires poems, songs, and even dances, too. Although Hong Kong is a westernized city, many couples still follow the rituals for traditional Chinese weddings nowadays. The wedding tea ceremony is one of them. On the wedding day, the bride serves the tea to her parents at home before the groom arrives. She does this out of respect and to thank her parents for raising her. And what's more, it's definitely interesting to see the mixing of traditional wedding tea ceremony with the Chinese dances. Tintan Buddha is only a five minute walk from the village. It's quite convenient. Have you guys noticed that most Buddha statues face south while the Tintan Buddha faces north? It's quite unique from its counterparts. Yes, I have noticed that, but I'm not quite sure of its importance. The one thing I do know is that it's a spectacular piece of artwork. I agree. Maybe the monks up there know why he gazes north. Perhaps there's a big mystery behind it. Let's go find out. Guys, wait a second. We we're supposed to climb that massive staircase to get to the statue. It's massive. 268 steps. It's going to take forever. Jason, you should be in better shape than that. I thought you were going to the gym. Anyway, we can't miss a chance to visit this dominant landmark. Come on, let's go. Let's okay. go. The Buddha is 34 meters high and weighs 250 tons. This outdoor bronze seated Buddha can be seen as far away as Macau on a clear day. Hey Jason, hurry up, we need to catch the last cable car. The color red has had a long history in the celebrations of Chinese New Year due to ancient mythology. Well, there's a tale about people in ancient China who lived in fear of a ferocious beast until one day an old man found the secret to defeat it. Everyone painted their houses the color red and made loud noises. No wonder Chinese people love to wear red during the festivals. Whether or not you wear red depends on your personal preference, but I'm sure you're going to want to look your very best when you meet your friends and family. A new beginning, a new start. The Chinese New Year, or the Spring Festival as it's sometimes called, is the time to bring in the new, which is traditionally done through symbolic activities, like doing a bit of spring cleaning or buying new things to replace the old. And I'm here today to find out about some new styles. So what's in? What's stylish? And most of all, what should men wear to make sure they get lucky this year? And how we can make going to work in suit wearing much more fun the Chinese New Year. Uh, basically what we are trying to propose in our shop and in our propositions is to match colors with something a little bit more formal. So mm. generally what we are trying, if we go and decide, for example, I can show you a few examples, we are matching pants uh, that generally speaking we are with stripes or something a little bit more classic, mm. even a pin stripes, with some color. The color we use to match it's very often with a white ground, so when you have a white ground and a few colors on, it makes everything a little bit more sophisticated, not so strong and not so strong in the face, but refresh with new accessories. It's very important also wearing, for example, a silk and linen uh, scarves that has been printed with 15, 20 colors, so everything gets a little bit very, very fresh and very, very important. If you want something a little bit more casual, we can go in this kind of color combination where we can have the knits. Knitwear, for example, in our collection is something that is working extremely well in the last uh, few seasons. This is cashmere and cotton. It's a knitwear that is uh, light, comfortable for traveling also, for example, if you have to travel, taking the plane, and that, like the events of today, especially during the Chinese New Year, everybody used to travel a lot. Mm. So it's important to have something comfortable, doesn't wrinkle, and can be also very um, elegant. To encourage more fortune, be bold and creative. Smart, groomed and relaxed looks are to go for. And since the fashion for ties has experienced dramatic shifts, it's important to get it right. The current trend is an imaginative blend of different weaves and fabrics within one tie, with an emphasis on patterns. The new weaves tend to create a 3D finish. 
The overall effect is dynamic, fresh, and optically stunning. I'm going to show everyone how to do a single knot tie. So the longer part goes in front, you simply wrap it around the back like this. Afterwards, pinch the tie here so it creases. Brilliant, huh? Over the last five years, ties had exploded in colour. The previous trend was very sophisticated, to match the formal suits of the 90s. The future looks to the ultra-slim tie to match the sleek silhouette of upcoming seasons. And not to break with tradition, brand new underwear for the new year is a must. That's all we've got time for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And for more information on our fabulous Chinese New Year episode, check out our website. Next week, we'll have more on where to shop, where to eat, and how to live Dolce Vita in Hong Kong. So, Happy New Year, and see you next week. Bye. Bye.